So, in as much as we know that there are other factors, uh, biological factors, uh, that can cause sickness within the body of a man, using the human being as a yesterday man, we also know from a study that a greater percentage of the bodily sickness is a byproduct of a disorder in the soul of a man. Mm. That is why you can't disconnect perfect healing from the healing of the soul. Mm. Or you can't, you can't. Because even if when the, the, the drugs have been administered to a sick body, if there is no perfect healing of the soul, it will end up in a temporary situation. Because once the internal condition that produces the standard situation is triggered again, the man falls back to where it's coming from. I think this is a place where there's a balance between uh, the medical science and the psychology. Yes, that's what one of the things I want us to get in the So you have such discussion like uh, I know such uh, 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 aspects of, of, of bodily uh, teaching or sickness that talks about it, the psychosomatic disorder. Mm -hmm. You know, psychosomatic, the body mind sickness mm -hmm. that sometimes. Uh, the, the problem of the body mm. is interconnected with the head of the mind. Mm. And then when you are discussing of the bodily disorder from the psychosomatic dimension, mm. what this is clearly indicating is that until you get the mind right, mm. there are certain sicknesses, symptoms, physical pathological sicknesses mm. that may never be properly addressed. Mm. So mm. I think this is one major aspect mm. that needs to be considered when discussing physical healing. Mm. Then, on the other hand, uh, beside the mind and body issue, mm. we also know that uh, bad uh, head uh, feeding mm. habits mm. can also lead to physical uh, uh, sickness. Yeah. You know, lack of proper hygiene mm. can uh, also degenerate the body to a position where there is a breakdown in the body. And then uh, some uh, issues like uh, human uh, mistakes leading to accidental discharge of certain situations can also lead to bodily breakdown. But having established all this, the fact is that once it revolves healing, both accidental situation, sickness caused as a result of accident, or the sickness caused as a result of uh, 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 hygiene, uh, uh, problem of hygiene, yes. or the one that is triggered as a result of the, the problem of the mind leading to body breakdown, once there is sickness, the bottom line is that there is need for healing. There is need for there is need for healing. So some of these things can cause the body to be to be sick. Yes. I saw in Second Kings chapter four verse forty, where they said to me, and um, my emphasis is on verse forty. He said, then they said it to the men to it. Now it happened. As they were eating this stew, that they cried out and said, Man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat this. Connecting it to nutrition, that there are one that can be careless about his feeding and may be eating to die, not knowing he's thinking he's eating to live. Yes, yes. Yes, of death in the pot. Death in the pot. Oh, Instead of life, in life in the pot. Of course, the pot, which is uh, uh, the, the, the place where food comes out literally, yes. before it being dished out to the entire house, is supposed to be uh, a pot of life. Yes, where we eat and get more. We eat and, and get nutrients and, 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 and the necessary vitamins you know, that is needed. Now, what here you see a very clear indication from the scripture as rightly pointed out that there is death in the world. That means when people are careless about what, about they, what they eat, mm. what is meant for life mm. ends up producing death. Yeah. In fact, uh, in the kind of economy where we live, uh, using our geographical location as a point of reference, to a greater percentage, Many people eat death and not life. Because mm. they are not intentional. They are not intentional about what they eat. That is it. Mm. A good number of people are not intentional about what they eat. Mm. Anything goes. Anything goes. Mm. So this kind of attitude towards life. Mm. In fact, even if the mercy and the grace for, for a perfect health is present with a man mm. by the providence of God's goodness. Mm. 
if a man is careless with what he is, is not intentional, I think that should be the right word. If one is not intentional about what he is, what is supposed to mean the pot of life can become the pot of death. Now, our focus today is not to exalt the sickness, it's to talk about the remedy. Because I believe God is using this program to open the eyes of people out there that healing is possible and to educate them and boost their faith. Please, if you are watching, share it on every platform. Go ahead and share. Share to everybody on every platform. Let's talk about how a sick person, what does a sick person need to do or what is required of a sick person for him or her to receive healing. Because I want to believe there are people who are watching us today who, based on our discussion, they have identified that there is physical ailment, whether medically diagnosed or otherwise, who have identified one or two things that can cause the body to be sick. And what they will be looking for is now what next? What is the solution? So, man of God, what can somebody do? What is the process that one can pass through to receive the healing? Okay, uh, how we established earlier, of course, with the proper disclaimer that uh, I am not a medical expert, mm -hmm. so uh, I have to make this disclaimer very, very prominent uh, for the sake of professionalism. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so uh, I will not be proffering suggestion as a, a professional in health uh, industry. But as a servant of God. As a servant of God who has a general <laughs> knowledge of life, uh, we can speak uh, from a few things we know. And uh, with respect to this, I will say that it, it has to be examined from different, different angles, uh, which implies that uh, when you notice that there are, are symptoms, you know, of imbalance in health, I think uh, one of the, the fundamental uh, human common sense that is required is that firstly, after having observed yourself, that uh, it appears as if uh, the body is not in the proper shape that it used to be. The, the first common sense requirement is that there should be uh, a, a medical check. You know, there should be a medical check, see a health professional, and then in this case, uh, a properly trained doctor. Uh, explain the situation and then get proper diagnosis and then before there is also prescription for for, the, for drugs or any other suggested aspect of uh, treatment. So, and then um, when that is, is, is done, if there is any finding from the, the medical diagnosis, there is also advisable that the individual should stick to the prescription of medication prescribed by the the doctor or the health expert involved because uh, to be honest there are a lot of people that are very careless with some respect to to their heads you know uh, there are people who feel uh, sometimes it doesn't matter there are those who feel they can take care of themselves without the help of an expert and then and there are some who even when they have made little efforts to consult a medical expert still uh, become so careless with sticking to the professionally prescribed uh, prescription with respect to how they can get well. So it's advisable that when, once uh, an individual discovers that everything is not well with your body or there are symptoms that is, is showing inadequacy with the head, that there should be a proper medical consultation. And then, if having done all medically uh, to see that you are getting well, and you find out that uh, things are not falling in place. Uh, I think uh, at that point, there will be need to connect medicine to, to spirituality. Uh, let me also say this, that the, the, the fact that the one is consulting a, a health expert in the presence of sickness does not also take away the fact that you have to carry God along. Because there are people who become so medically focused mm -hmm. that they ignore the place of divine intervention. Mm -hmm. The fact is that God uses the medical experts 
to bring about a, a cure, maybe to the body. And so rightly he say we cure what God is. Yeah. So God used the medical expert to bring cure to the ailments of the body. But healing mm. is primarily the assignment of God. of God. Because if God does not come in, mm. even the best of medical attention will not get any mm. results. Because we've also heard of people who are being treated but are not responding to treatment. Yes. Or people who are ill and they could, can, could not diagnose exactly what is wrong with them. In fact, in fact, in fact, in fact that man of God, that brings us to something that is very particular that we need to point out at this at this very moment. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we noted that some physical ailments uh, can be psychological, mm -hmm. and like the issue of a psychosomatic disorder yeah. pointed out where the problem of the mind can translate into the degeneration of the human body. Mm -hmm. I have pointed out the problem of uh, hygiene mm -hmm. and then uh, improper feeding and things like that, uh, in the pot. We will not also rule out the fact that there are a lot of bodily sicknesses mm -hmm. that is a byproduct of spiritual manipulation. Mm -hmm. uh, with this regard, no matter how much medical attention, in fact, even when you are getting the result medically, you are just getting a temporary result, a temporary solution. Mm -hmm. Because it has never been proven so far that there is any laboratory that diagnoses a spiritual problem. Mm -hmm. One has never been to any medical uh, uh, outfit and uh, the laboratory examination mm -hmm. proves that what you are suffering is a witchcraft mm -hmm. attack. Mm -hmm. And we can't rule out the fact that there are certain headache, mm -hmm. certain malaria, mm -hmm. certain uh, uh, even viral diseases mm -hmm. that is spiritually manipulated and projected into people's life. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and then the person didn't see the spiritual manipulation, mm -hmm. but the person is seeing the physical sickness, mm -hmm. which is the outcome, which of is the outcome of the spirit. So, when we are looking at the healing of both nature and man, we have to, and this is where we implore our our brethren in the medical profession because sometimes they can be so medically minded that uh, they ignore some of these other dimension mm -hmm. that are all components that can create a problem to the human head. Uh, at this point, we implore uh, those in the medical profession uh, that in as much as you carry out your, your professionally uh, trained uh, expertise, uh, we should also be open, we should have an open mind that accommodates other possibilities which is that there are certain elements that may have no medical, no natural cause at all. That is purely spiritual. Now, let me, let me help, help that, sir. Uh, uh, you know, we are men of God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Academically, we are trained in different areas. Yes, sir. called by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have respect for, for every profession because they are designed to solve a problem on the surface of the earth. But the authority from which we are speaking on this platform is the authority of God's call upon our lives. Now, uh, to buttress that, in the Gospel of Luke chapter 13, if you read from verse 10, about Jesus was teaching on the Sabbath on one day. And look at verse 11, amplified version put it this way. He said, why was okay, let's take it from verse 10. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, verse 11 and the 5 version, and there was a woman there who for 18 years had an infirmity caused by a spirit, in brackets, a demon of sickness. She was bent completely forward and utterly unable to straighten herself or to look upward. She had a sickness. Bodily sickness. Bodily sickness is used by a demon. Caused by a demon. So, if you see, man of God, under this kind of issue, hmm. there is no medical help that can solve the problem. Under the sword that can address this thing. So, when Jesus saw her, in, if you read further, he did not say, Woman, take power. This is not to undermine the place of medicine. Not at all. He said, Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. And the Bible said, The spirit left her. And the moment the spirit left, she was threatened up, which means the physical ailment disappeared the moment the spirit was arrested. In fact, when you look at uh, the book of uh, Revelation,
Revelation, I want to correlate something to what you just said, servant of God. The book of Revelation chapter 6, Revelation chapter 6 from verse, uh, verse 8. Okay. Now, the Bible pointed out something here. It said, I looked and there before me was a pale horse. Mm. It rider's name was Death. Mm. And Hades was following close behind him. Mm. They were given power over a quarter of the earth mm. to kill by sword, mm. by famine, mm. by disease, mm. and by the white beast of the earth. Mm. So, sickness is an offspring of the spirit of death. Mm. Whether uh, pathologically uh, caused, whether uh, uh, mind, soul wise motivated, mm. whether from any demon. The, the conclusion from the spiritual and the scriptural authority is that sickness is an offspring of the spirit of death. In fact, the child of the spirit of death. Can we now say now, before we begin to look at how people can be healed, can we now say now, based on the authority of scripture, that it's not every affliction that is caused by natural factors. That is, that is as simple as can be caused by factors beyond the physical. That's true, sir. And that physical manifestation is an expression of something happening beyond the physical. In fact, it's as, it's as clearly said as you have just narrated it, sir. Okay, can we look at how people can be healed? Because I discovered that. Uh, they were in the scripture. Let me take it from that one. You know, in the past, we talk about hindrances to him. Now we want to see how the process of receiving bodily healing. And one of the things I identified first is faith. Because I looked at most of the healings of Jesus. He had this one phrase that kept coming from his mouth. Your faith has made you has made you. Your faith has made you. Your faith. In fact, in the issue of the woman that brought the daughter, and Jesus said, food that is meant for children is not given to dogs. And the woman said, sir, even dogs eat the bigger crumbs that fall from the master's table. Jesus said, I have not seen a faith like this in Israel. So, for somebody to receive physical healing, he needs to have faith. And what is faith? Believing in the power of God. Believing that the power of God can erase that affliction. Counting on God, not leaning on human understanding. Not calculating the outcome by the understanding of men. But relying completely on God. Look at that one with the issue of God in Mark chapter 5. The Bible says she made up her mind. And said, as I go today, if I can touch his garment, I will be healed. Not let me touch and see if I may be healed. It was not a probability. Faith is not probability. Faith is certainty. That's why Hebrew 11 1 he said, Faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Faith is believing the impossible. A man of God once defined the word F A I T H uh, as uh, an abbreviation that stands for the F stands of us who. The A stands for ability, the I stands for ignite, the T stands for tremendous, and the A stands for happening. Forceful ability, igniting tremendous happening. Mm -hmm. So the trigger of healing, both for the recipient and for the one ministering the healing, faith is needed. Mm -hmm. What other thing do you think, sir, that we need to receive healing? Okay. You know, when you talk the subject of faith, uh, it's such a general one, a versatile one, because uh, even uh, a sick person seeking uh, medical attention is also exercising faith. Mm. In this regard, faith in the medical attention, mm. faith in the medicine, mm. faith in the doctor. Mm. And then a doctor who is also administering drug to a patient is also expressing faith. Mm. The doctor believes that the administration of the medication mm. can get the sick person out, out, out of his or her ailment. So 
Uh, what this implies is that with respect to healing generally, uh, there is a place of faith, mm. either a spiritual faith or a natural faith. Mm. So with that faith, there will be no results. Mm. So uh, if one does not believe in the medical uh, uh, expert, no matter what attention he or she receives, mm. he, will never, he will never be well. Mm. You know? So if you don't believe in taking medication, even if they give you the best medication for a particular ailment, mm. it has to agree with the mind first. Mm. So in the absence of faith, there can be no healing in a spiritual or even natural. Even the natural one can't work. Which that. means the mind must see possibility of that is as clear as that. Which is the psychological aspect. Yes, yes it's, it's as clear as that. Mm -hmm. So what the mind, in, and, and, and in the literary form, what do we even call faith? Besides the scriptural explanation of faith as, a, as a, a believing in things God for not sin, uh, Faith from the, 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 the psychological aspect can simply be uh, explained as a program belief, mm. you know, a program belief that is conditioning the mind to accept something, mm. you know. And that is why the scripture was clear saying it comes by hearing, it comes by the hearing by the word of God. Now, the reason why the scripture had to be, to be specific about the, the, the scriptural and the spiritual faith relating it to the word of God. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. In this regard, it's trying to let you know mm -hmm. that outside the word of God, mm -hmm. anything else you keep hearing mm -hmm. can build faith in you in mm -hmm. that aspect. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So, if someone is hearing about medical, the, the, how well a particular doctor has been doing, mm -hmm. you know, in treating people, mm -hmm. it comes to a point to where he or she believes that and for me to get well, I just need to go to this hospital. Mm -hmm. I just need to see this very doctor mm -hmm. and things will be well. Mm -hmm. So in this regard now, it's faith in the ability of the doctor. In the ability of the doctor. So that is why I say with respect to the subject of faith in the area of healing, it's so general mm -hmm. that it can be both spiritual, psychological and natural. Mm -hmm. Now, but the center point is that for healing to happen, mm -hmm. there must be that center, central point called faith. Element. Element. That element of faith, either in God or in the doctor or in the prescription made by a doctor. Now, having established that, I also want to point out that besides the fundamental aspect, mm -hmm. which is the element of faith, yes, whether spiritual, psychological, or natural faith, mm -hmm. for other, uh, other things that are required for healing to be made uh, possible, is that uh, one also had to be proactive mm. with respect to that faith. Mm. Now, if you are taking, for instance, exercising faith in the spirituality of healing, mm. trusting God for healing, you also have to be proactive. Mm. You know, mm. one has to be proactive in the sense that there are times you may have to take action, proactive action, step of faith. Step of faith, yes, I think that should be the right word. Mm. Step of faith towards the faith to exercise it. Mm. That means if you're believing God uh, to be healed, uh, maybe you have been lying down on you, and you are trusting God that uh, I don't want to continue lying down. You know, I want to get off from this bed. I am not, uh, this is not based on medical effort, but I'm just relying on you. It involves the, the step of faith here, uh, beside the place, the, the, the presence of faith. The step of faith requires that from time to time, the individual should be able to make physical effort to see if I can actually move from the bed. You know, I am trusting God for this. So that step is very essential. In fact, there are many people who profess faith without ever taking the step. That is faith without action. That is faith without action. Mm -hmm. The scripture says it's dead. Mm -hmm. it's dead. So if I have faith in the hospital and I sit at home, and not go for treatment or to see the doctor. It's faith without action. That is, that is, that is. That if, is. I, if I have faith that I'm trusting God for healing and I have prayed, but I'm still meditating upon the sickness, instead of meditating on what Jesus has done, it means in my mind I am not acting based on my prayer. In fact, it's as clear as we have just said. Because as, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, from the psychological point of view, faith is a program belief. Mm. Now, if you have 
uh, exercise faith in the healing power of God, and you have not taken a extra step to start reprogramming your mind mm -hmm. to believe in what you are exercising, what the attempt you are making towards God. If the mind is still docile, open to the fact that uh, things are not well, things are not well, that attempt of getting spiritual help will not, will not be real. Now, one more question. Shortly, we are going to be praying for the sick, as many that are watching us and will watch later. Uh, there are all, two other things that I, I identified that could be a vehicle of healing. Number one, I think one who is coming to the Lord for healing, as long as God is not a wicked God, that will not refuse God to heal you. The, the seeking relationship with Him is also important. Because I saw in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14, I've quoted this separately. He said, My people who are called by my name can humble themselves. So for me to be healed, I need to humble myself before God and pray. So prayer is needed in the place. That's talking about the spiritual side of healing and not the medical side. Now. And pray and seek my face, which means I don't just pray, I seek the Lord. Seeking the Lord will be trying to know Him. Trying to find what mystery of the kingdom is responsible for the result I'm looking for. I don't know that you are with me, sir. Yes, yes. Now, let me finish that scripture. He said, humble themselves, one. Pray, seek my face. So, for me to pray, I need humility. And this prayer is not just praying, Lord, heal me. And as the Lord heal me, I go back into my life. And wait for when there is a problem again. God becomes like a fire baby. So, not just receiving the healing, to maintain the healing, I need to abide in him. So, seek my face, then turn from their wicked ways, which is a better. He said, Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their life. In other words, for people to be healed, they need to humble themselves before them. Pray to the Lord, seek his face. And if there are any activities of wickedness, they need to turn away from it. To implore God's mercy. So that God can hear their prayers and heal their life. Now, in seeking God, before I come to you, I want to establish this. In seeking God, I discover that seeking God is not just praying. Because if I'm a child of God, a man of God prays for me and me. I've seen people who are healed and the sickness came back. It's not because the man of God is not anointed. There is a place in the seeking where one needs to seek God to find out what is my inheritance in Christ, knowing that healing is our inheritance. So if I receive it by mercy and have not understood that it is the will of God that should be in good health and search for the principles in God's word that makes for me to live a healthy life, I may not enjoy this promise. Now, to portray that, I saw in Psalm 107, verse 20, the Bible says he sent his word and he used them and delivered them from their destruction. So, we can't separate healing from the word of God because the word of God was sent to 